Welcome to this travel and history tip and we will be going on a road trip south of Goldfield to Beatty so that we can visit some great sites around this really popular town in western Nevada. I always like to find these old time pieces in cities across the country. One of the other crazy things outside of Beatty north on 95 towards Goldfield is this old airplane. I don't even remember how it got there. It's a lot of fun just to scribble on and leave a mark. Beatty is a great place to see burrows. They're just walking all through the town. The main attraction near Beatty is Rhyolite. Situated southwest of Beatty, Rhyolite, the former Queen City of Death Valley, is one of the most photographed of all ghost towns. Step back in time to Golden Street, the main street in town, and imagine it crammed with horses, dogs, pack mules, stagecoaches, and pedestrians. After the demise of mining there, the power was turned off to the town in 1916. Crumbling walls of other structures stand on the Rhyolite, with Nevada's striking blue sky and mine shafts looming in the cliff sides in the background. The structures are owned both publicly and privately. We have driven through and explored the stunning abandoned town seven times and I can't wait to go back. Have you hit the subscribe button yet? At the entrance of Rhyolite, we read this sign. In 1904, Frank Shorty Harris. And Shorty is one of the most infamous people of Death Valley. Shorty and Ed Cross found green-colored, high-grade gold ore. The resulting gold rush created the Bullfrog District. Its premier community was Rhyolite. Platted in 1905, it quickly grew into the largest city in southern Nevada. That's just impressive, isn't it? Eventually served by three water systems and three railroads. The Tonopon Tidewater, the Bullfrog, Goldfield, and the Las Vegas and Tonopah, whose 1908 depot still stands. Rhyolite boomed. By 1907, it claimed a population of 6,000. With the economic collapse of 1907 and the closure of the Charles Schwab Montgomery Shoshone Mine in 1910, the town died. By 1920, only 14 residents remained. During its heyday, the lack of local timber supplies led to concrete and adobe being used for most buildings. Though three buildings were built from empty bottles, with one still standing today. The town's growth was fast and its demise was nearly as fast. Today, Rhyolite stands as a testament to the mining heritage of Southern Nevada. Gold was discovered in this area in 1904. Several mining camps quickly grew around the discoveries. The town of Rhyolite was founded in 1905 and became the city of dreams. Dreams of gold, prosperity, greed, and speculation. By 1906, Rhyolite was turning into a modern town with indoor plumbing, electricity, and other luxuries. However, the dream was short-lived. The mines began to fail, and by 1910, people were leaving and the mines were closing. Today, most of the town has disappeared from the landscape. Some buildings were moved to new towns. Others fell down or were taken apart for their materials. We invite you to explore and try to imagine what this once thriving town was like in 1907. At that time, it had an estimated population of five to 8,000 people. 18 grocery stores, 50 saloons, 19 lodging houses, six barbers, four bakeries, 35 gaming tables, eight doctors, and three railroads. We love to take pictures there and we also like to go and take distant shots from the surrounding hillsides. There are many mine shafts all across this region and many of them are set off by fences so that people do not get injured. So when exploring in these kinds of places, please use caution. The Cook Bank is the most iconic building in Rhyolite and is one of the most photographed ruins in Nevada. John Cook and his brother started the John S. Cook and Company Bank in Goldfield, Nevada in January of 19. 1905. Since the closure of the Cook Bank, the building has appeared in many movies. Despite its opulence, the Cook Bank was open less than two years. In the summer and fall of 1907, a financial crisis, often referred to as the Knickerbocker Crisis, caused banks across the country to go bankrupt. By 1910, the Cook Bank was closed and John Cook had sold off all the building's fixtures. Over the course of the years and our visits to Rhyolite, we always have to take pictures of the Cook Bank building. And it's quite a bit of contention among our family who has taken the most beautiful photograph of this structure. You'll have to be the judge and tell me which picture you like the best. And then there's Senator Stewart. William M. Stewart believed in Rhyolite and invested heavily in the growing boomtown and local mines. When Stewart came to Rhyolite in 1905, he built a law office and a sprawling mansion, two of the finest 
tallest buildings in town. Before his time in Rhyolite, Stewart served in Congress as the first senator for the new state of Nevada. The Silver Senator helped push the 1872 National Mining Act through Senate. This law governs the prospecting and mining of economic minerals such as gold, silver, and copper on federal public lands to this day. It has been said that Senator Stewart had a favorite borough that he rode around town during his two-year residency in Rhyolite, which ended when he moved back to Washington, D.C. We have the Overbury Building and Bishop Jewelry Store. Like many other grand buildings in town, the Overbury Building was abandoned in 1910, and much of it was dismantled by 1924. And there's the Porter Brothers Store. Like many merchants of the time, the Porter Brothers, Hiram and Lyman, moved from mining camp to mining camp following the reports of booms and strikes. Following the rich gold strikes in Southern California, they opened mercantiles in Johannesburg, Ballarat, near Death Valley, Beatty, and of course, this one in Rhyolite. Unfortunately, even the popular store was not immune to the downturn that would disseminate Rhyolite's businesses. It closed in 1910. Hiram, however, would stay in Rhyolite for the next nine years, serving as the town's postmaster until the post office closed on September 15, 1919. The Tom Kelly Bottle House is one of the few remaining examples of bottle house architecture in the United States. Wood was scarce and bottles weren't. Kelly paid local children 10 cents for a wheelbarrow full of bottles. That's about $3 in 2021. The building cost about $2,500. It's unique location made it the perfect site for some films. In 1924, Paramount Pictures used it in the film Wanderers in the Wasteland, based off of a Zane Grey novel. The film crew had to tear down the rear wall so they could film inside of the house before they left. They totally rebuilt the wall and stabilized the building. We have taken pictures over the years and many of these structures out there are being renovated and it's great to see that. Trash from years ago of the mining days is okay to see but not modern day trash. The train depot is one of the most exciting stops there, but it is one of the buildings that is in pretty bad shape and needs to be renovated. Since the 1930s, the depot has passed from person to person, eventually ending up with the Barrick Mining Company. In October of 2000, the Bureau of Land Management acquired the depot, along with most of the Rhyolite town site from the mining company in a land swap. And I really wish that they would be able to have the funds to renovate these gorgeous structures so that our history will not be lost. In the 1960s, two sisters operated the lower floor as a museum and a gift shop for tourists. Fortunately, it is under 24-hour video surveillance and hopefully that will deter any further vandalism. Notice, you are on federal lands. Cultural resources in the vicinity of this notice are fragile and irreplaceable. The Archaeological Resources Protection Act of 1979, the Antiquities Act of 1906, protect them for the benefit of all Americans. We took this great picture through the fence. There are some crazy sights there in Rhyolite too, including this version of The Last Supper. And I'm not sure what this pink Cinderella girl is. And your guess is as good as mine. I think these are like fenders and parts of bicycles. Not really sure. We have a geocache just west of Rhyolite. It's called Rainbow Sherbert. In one of our travel and history tips, I'll talk to you about geocaching. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Protect your heritage. Please do not disturb the sensitive archaeological area. Warning, rattlesnakes. Don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the thumbs up.